Hi, it's Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team, bringing the word on the street, talking Indiana real estate. Today, I'm in Greenwood, Indiana. Maybe you heard the name a few years back when a uh, young punk opened up in the Greenwood Park Mall, uh, killing three innocent people. If you'll stick around, I'm gonna give you the details on that and then answer your question. Is it safe to live in the city of Greenwood, Indiana? Greenwood was uh, founded in 1823 and it grew fairly rapidly as a uh, truck farming and later as a cannery town. Today it boasts a population of 64,000 residents. It's located immediately south of the city of Indianapolis, which is the state capital and its largest city. It's bounded on the east basically by I-65 and on the west by I-69. I-465, which is the uh, Indianapolis Metro Beltway, is just about five minutes north it will take you anywhere in the metro area that you want to go. Employment is diverse, but uh, maybe over half of the residents work in uh, retail and services. There are two major hospitals located within the city limits and two just immediately across the street. There are 17 parks located within the city of Greenwood and they uh, have a total of 20 miles of trails. The Parks and Rec Department offers a full slate of uh, community events, including uh, music and movies in the park during the summer months. And they even have a uh, community camp out. Now, if uh, golf is your jam, uh, there's a good number of courses that are really pretty nice. A lot of rolling hills and that type of thing. But one that the residents go to uh, maybe most often is right across the street in the city of Indianapolis, right on the border, and that's Smock Golf Course. <laughs> nice day like today, you'll find the, uh, the driving range just full of people hitting a bucket of balls. When it comes to restaurants and the dining scene, Greenwood is paced by a large number of chain restaurants, but my fave is no such thing. The Oak and uh, Barrel Brewing Company offers up a great slate of uh, good grub and good beers. It opened in 1994 and is the second oldest brew pub in the state of Indiana. Another of my favorites is Stone Creek. It's a Cunningham property, which is a, a local chain, if you will. They've got about 20 restaurants that started here in uh, Indianapolis area, and uh, they're all good. But uh, Stone Creek, yeah, that's one of my faves. And the locals will tell you, you gotta try pizza at Giacomo's. Okay, let's talk shopping. There's a lot of it in Greenwood. There's strip centers scattered all over uh, the city, as well as some big box stores but uh, the great majority of it is probably centered around the Greenwood Park Mall. So back to uh, July 17th, 2022, when that young man walked into uh, the food court here at the Greenwood Park Mall, he opened fire, dumped uh, 40 rounds into the crowd. He killed three innocent people and wounded two others. The first to take a bullet was uh, a young man with a family of three uh, young children and a wife. His name was Victor Gomez. He was both a client and a friend. He was also one heck of a contractor working with granite and marble and quartz. He did a lot of work for my clients and even uh, worked on my own home. And I gotta tell you, I really loved his waterfall designs, uh, the waterfall countertops with the spillover on them. They were truly uh, set him apart from an awful lot of other uh, contractors. Here's a uh, quick pick from a flip that we did a few years back that uh, he did his waterfall design on and this property sold really quick. All in all though, Victor was just a really good guy. So fortunately, there was another uh, good guy present. His name was Elijah Dixon. He was here shopping with his girlfriend. When he heard the shots fired, he uh, responded immediately, and fortunately he was carrying. He dumped uh, 10 rounds, eight of them directly into the perp, killing him instantly. That's some shooting, and thankfully so. Now ask yourself, was this an anomaly, or is Greenwood not a safe place to live? Now the residents of the city of Green will tell you that yes, this is a very safe community to live in. And the national crime statistics will tell you that Greenwood, the average crime here is 20% below the national average. And I can add that there are many places where I get out of the car and I want something in my hands. Greenwood is not that place. When you are in Greenwood, you do feel safe. You just do. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Okay, let's talk real estate. 
The city of Greenwood is actually served by three different school systems and so today I'm going to concentrate on homes that are for sale and just uh, the Greenwood Community School Corporation. We'll save the other two uh, for another video. There were 261 homes sold in Greenwood during the past 12 months. They ranged in price from 106 all the way up to 820,000 and the median fell right in at 260,000. Okay, I'm standing in front of 1264 Severn Court. This is a 1400 square foot ranch style home with three bedrooms and two full baths. It has an inviting great room with great natural light and high ceilings. The kitchen sports uh, refinished cabinets, granite countertops, and newer appliances. It has a split floor plan and the master bedroom has uh, uh, an ensuite with dual vanities. You can step outside to the private fenced-in backyard. You've got a patio and a fire pit to enjoy it all. Okay, this one was built in 1992. The ticket is right at the median, 260000 This one is listed by Keller Williams Indy Metro South. And FYI, I can help you with any house that's for sale in the state, whether it's listed by myself, another broker, or um, even if it's a FISBO. Now, if you have a home to sell, uh, before you can buy your next one, you'll be sure to want to tune into this next section because I'm guaranteeing it will help you make money. But hey, if you don't have a home to sell, just uh, skip ahead to the next home on the tour if you prefer. So if you're thinking about selling, have you ever wondered if you're going to have to paint or re-carpet? Or maybe your brother-in-law told you that you just have to fix up your bathroom. Hey, follow me. I'm going to arm you with some knowledge so you can make the best decisions that will make you the most money. And I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. Number one, you are now in the business of selling real estate. This is no longer about your house. It's time to focus on making it someone else's house. If you're going to get emotionally attached to a house, do it with the new home that you're about to buy. Number two, we use professional photography, which means to you, people will put eyeballs on your property. That plus our marketing will equal lots of interest. But so I hate to tell you that even with all that interest, people are gonna do their best to talk themselves out of walking through your home. It drives me nuts, but our job, your job is to get them from the street to inside the house. Hey, they're gonna drive by and they're gonna do their best to talk each other out of walking through the house. So, curb appeal matters a lot, more than it should. Hey, if you think about it, you live 90% of your time inside your house, about 9% in the backyard on the deck or playing with the kids, and about 1% in the front yard. And that's usually when you're shoveling snow or mowing the grass, not doing something that's a whole lot of fun. But hey, you only get one chance to make a first impression. So you're gonna to wanna to be sure to trim the overhanging tree, put the trash cans out of sight, put the bikes and basketballs away, hey, and bring some color. Flower baskets in the summertime, maybe some mums in the fall, you got Christmas or Halloween, 4th of July, you got big bright flags. Put some color between the street and your house. Number three, say you do manage to get them to the front porch. There they are, the realtors fumbling with the lockbox, trying to get the key out. And what are the buyers doing? They're looking around, they're seeing the cobwebs and the dirt and the grime and the front door that hasn't been cleaned in God knows how long. So, hey, make sure that they're staring at something clean and sharp. First impressions matter. Hey, you may never use the front door. If you're like most people, you come in through the garage, but you're gonna bring everybody in for a showing through the front door. So, hey, paint the front door, knock down the spider webs, power wash the front porch. If you don't have the equipment or don't want to do it, I know a guy. Number four, once they're inside the front door, the priority begins in the front hallway and it works back from there. First impressions again. Hey, I've had people take one step inside a house and go, hey Bob, this one's just not for us. We're out of here. Hey, so the least important things to get done are the basement, the kid's bedroom, the garage. You can have all the boxes in the world in the garage and it doesn't matter. The side of the house, don't worry about power washing that. That's the, like the last thing that you do. What matters is everything as you move back through the house. That's what's most important. So concentrate your efforts beginning there. Number five, there's a saying and it's God awful true. Kitchens and baths sell houses. Now, the price point may play a role in what you do. A few years back, I was doing a listing presentation with somebody and it was a pretty nice house. I mean, it was kind of unique, but it, it was pressing a mill. 
And the guy just refused to consider putting granite countertops in. He said, well, the people will, they'll want to choose their own. Sorry, people looking at a million dollar home do not want to look at Formica countertops. So consider what price point you're at and then do the things that need to be done to sell it to somebody shopping at that price point. You wanna motivate them. It's not about you, it's about them. Make it attractive to them. Make them get their checkbook out. So you may wanna consider, do the appliances match? Are they all working? Do all the burners work? Or is it obvious that there's something wrong with that kitchen range? Hey, it may not have bothered you. You may have lived with it for 10 years, but a buyer coming in, those are like trigger points for them is to say, well, maybe the house hasn't been taken care of, or it just doesn't give you that first impression. You may need to tile a bathroom or update some plumbing or electrical fixtures. Hey, it all depends. And when it comes time to show your house or have people walk through your house, you're gonna wanna remember this because yes, it's a pain in the donkey, but kitchens and baths sell houses. So take the time when people are walking through that those things look sharp. Number six, you're gonna to wanna to walk through your house and you're gonna to wanna to thin it out. You wanna look at your countertops and the, the, the tops of chests of drawers and bookcases and all those things, and you wanna remove half of the items there. You wanna box them up, you wanna move them out, you wanna give it to Goodwill, you wanna haul it away. Then you wanna do half again. That's about what most of us have on our tops of our counters and our chests of drawers is way too much stuff for the person coming in looking to buy. Now, this doesn't cost you a whole lot, but it does take a little bit of time and effort. Now, I don't agree with realtors that say you need to depersonalize your house totally. I think you need to convey to people that the people living here like to live here. Buyers like that feeling. They can tell when they walk through a house and it's a divorce situation and the guy's sleeping on a bed on the floor. That doesn't help create a good feeling. So. Hey, you do what you can to make it feel warm. Even if you take out a lot of the personal stuff, leave enough so that they, they get a feeling that somebody enjoys living there. Hey, people even like seeing those uh, notes on the kitchen table or on a chalkboard that say, 10 things we love about living here. That's something you might wanna think about. Number seven, people ask me, should we get a pre-listing inspection? That way we could repair everything in advance. And I go, no. Hey, here's what inspectors do. They come into your place and they write for three hours. That's how they justify their fee. They're there for three hours. If you get a pre-listing inspection done and you repair 30 items, when the buyer's inspector comes in, he's gonna write for three hours. And you're gonna have this another list that's equally as long as the first one. Every house has a list and they're long. They go 50 and 100 items. And you know what? When you move out of your next house, you'll probably have that list too. Besides, you don't know how the buyer's gonna respond. You know, buyers have different comfort levels about different things. One guy may be an electrician. Another one, the wife's brother may be a plumber. They may not give a hoot about those problems, okay? So unless it's something just real glaring that's gonna get in the way of the sale, up front, somebody writing an offer, hey, let it go. We'll deal with it at the time of the inspection, okay? Number eight. Now, there are some problems that just must be taken care of. If you've got asbestos or mold or stained ceilings or pet odors and stains, those are deal killers. I mean, people don't wanna hear about asbestos, okay? It scares the living daylights out of them. If you know you got a, a situation there, take care of it before you put the house on the market. If you have black mold hanging off of something or other, get it taken care of before the people start walking through your house. Stained ceilings, people go, oh, I don't wanna have to paint that ceiling. Hey, let me tell you, people walk through a house and it's one of the things that lots of people know and the guy will look at that stained ceiling and he'll point it out to the wife and then they'll walk through the house and he'll come back and he'll point out that stain in the ceiling. Now, you may have put a new roof on your house in the last year and it's not a problem or fixed the toilet five years ago but never painted the ceiling. But it's a problem to that buyer and you lose the buyer because you didn't get out a can of kills, paint it, and then paint the ceiling. And if you don't want to paint the whole ceiling, hey, I know a guy. Not to solve these problems will cost you more than the repair work. Number nine, carpets. Hey, if they're dirty, clean them. If they have wrinkles in them, get them stretched. If they're just beyond use, replace them. And I know a guy, 
for any of those jobs or for laminate or hardwoods as well. And your price point may dictate just what you need to do or want to do or have to do, okay? But again, first impressions. Number 10, paint hides a lot of blemishes. And this is especially true if you have a vacant house because when you move all your furniture away from the wall and take the paintings off the wall, there's gonna be these marks. And so the paint needs to be touched up or the room needs to be repainted. It's a cheap fix and it goes a long way to getting your house sold. And not just sold, but sold for the most money. Number 11. Hey, you do whatever it takes to get the house ready to sell and you got all life going on and the kids have got ball games and you know, all of these things and you're tired, but guess what? The house needs to be clean. And I mean really cleaned. It needs to kind of shine. So hey, clean it or have it cleaned. And yeah, I know a guy. Okay, number 12, almost done. Remove the screens if you can. It will make the amount of light coming into your house that much greater, which people love, okay? If you have, uh, if you live with your curtains closed, open them. Again, you're in the business of selling this property. It's not about you anymore. It's about the potential buyer getting their checkbook out. So, hey, have the windows washed. Brighten the place up. Clean windows just shine. Okay, and hey, I know a guy. Number 13, let's talk about staging. It's not something that a lot of people consider, but hey, cold vacant houses do not sell very well. And this may be a price point thing, but I view staging everywhere from about, I don't know, 250,000 on up. So, you know, that's not like major, major price point in today's market. Staging, professional staging can really make a difference in getting the most money for a house, selling it in the quickest time and with the least hassle. Every time I sell my own house, I put myself through this exact same exercise. I'm convinced it's why I've sold my last five houses on average in less than six days. And no, I didn't give them away, rest assured. Hey, on the first one over in Glendale, I'd been working on the house and I'd gotten it all fixed up and it was late on a Saturday afternoon and I loaded up all my tools and I had a pickup truck which was just loaded with stuff and I'm pulling out of the driveway and the last thing I do is I stop and I get out and I put the for sale sign in the front of the house and, the, and an open house sign. And this truck comes pulling up and the guy jumps out and he says, he's like dialing the phone and he says, hey, hey, can, can my wife and I look at your house? And I, I'm like, man, I'm beat, I'm going home. And I, he, he says, no, we really, my wife's gonna want this house. I, you know, sure, sure, sure thing. And we keep talking a little bit. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, he couldn't get a hold of his wife. And I said, I'll, I'll tell you what, I've got an open house tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and I will be here at eight o'clock. And, and if you wanna get a look before everybody else does, be here at eight o'clock. So the next morning, I'm there at about 10 to eight and the guy's already there. He's got his wife and he's got his realtor. And so I take him through the house and they say, give me a minute. And so they're out back uh, sitting at the uh, table on the deck and I'm getting ready for the open house. And so about 10, 15 minutes later, the realtor walks in and says, hey, can we have a minute? And so I go out and hey, you know what? 15 minutes later, we had a signed agreement for a full list price plus the realtor's commission. That's what you call a quick sale. So, hey, I pulled the open house sign and I went home. The second house, hey, I sold that one at the end of the first day. The third house was up in the mountains in Colorado and that one was an outlier. It took all of three weeks to sell. Number four, I sold on the Monday following the first weekend. And the fifth one, I sold on Tuesday after the first weekend. Hey, I hope you found this helpful and that it will help you sell your house in six days or less. Hey, we offer a free room by room analysis. I'll walk through the house with you. We can share ideas back and forth. It's free, there's no cost, there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, I'll help you make money and I'll help you save money by not doing things that you don't need to. Hey, to schedule a time, call or text me. Make it a great day now. 405 Orchard Lane. This is a two bedroom, one bath updated ranch. Got 936 square feet on the main level and that sits over a 702 square foot partially finished basement. It's an open concept with a chef's delight kitchen, but hey, maybe more importantly, you get to step outside to a beautiful backyard. It's got uh, mature trees, multi-level deck, patio, gazebo, raised beds. Hey, and it's even got a chicken coop. And this is only just minutes to everything. 
It's listed by the A-Cup team, and the ticket on this one is $269.9. If I can be of service with uh, this house or the one previous or any other that you see advertised, be sure to give me a quick call or text. Hey, enough said. You make it a great day now. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. Today, I've got the monthly market report for the month of September, 2024. In drum roll. Hey, housing inventory continues to increase across central Indiana. It is up 11% year over year, and that is a good thing. Leading the charge is Hamilton County, falling right in line at that 11% increased mark. Inventories have grown, now get this, even though closings are up 3%. So that means inventory is increasing faster than closings. That means more people are putting their houses on the market for sale, but that activity is slowing just a bit. Half of the homes are now selling in 18 days, whereas a year ago, that number was 12 days. Hey, and you probably want to know, what have prices been doing? Well, prices have been stable across central Indiana. The median price is now holding stable from a year ago at 300,000. Hey, and maybe you wanna know, can you get a big discount off a of price? Well, hey, discounts are going right now about one to 2% off the list price on average, which means that the typical house selling for 300,000 was probably listed right around 305,000. Inventory has grown over 11% over the past year. So how many houses are on the market? Drum roll. Hey, there's now 5,027 single family homes on the market for sale. And with mortgage rates now back down into the sixes, it just might be a good time to take a look at what homes are available. Hey, FYI, I can set you up with an intelligence search for just the type of home you're looking for. I can take into account location, schools, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, age, style, you name it. Heck, I can even sort for the size of the garage or if it's on a lake or not. I can sort for a whole host of factors that are important just to you. Let me know if that interests you. I can help you find and secure the house that's just right for you. And there's no cost or obligation, so text or call me. If you're considering relocating to the greater Indianapolis area or moving anywhere within central Indiana, be sure to tune in every week to learn all there is to know about real estate and living in Indiana. Whether you're buying or selling, please keep in mind, I work harder to make good things happen. Hey, make it a great day now. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next clip right now.